Hey, let's take another look at how the markets ended today. Stocks soaring across the board with the S&P closing back above 4,200 for the first time since May 4th. That move coming after CPI, consumer prices, flat in July. For more on what the inflation report says about the economy, what it means for the Fed, let's bring in CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leesman. Steve, nice to see you many, many hours later after the report. But, I mean, basically, the notion is that the Fed can be 50 points in September and wait. Yeah, that's the way the market's priced. And, and I, I must admit, Melissa, you're holding up way better than I am 12 hours after, however many hours after this number came out. Um, look, uh, the market is buoyant and taking this in, in a really positive way. Fed officials less so. It's worth pointing out Kashkari out there in the afternoon saying, uh, I'm still on track for a 394% funds rate. Evan's staying, he's still on track for three and a quarter, three and a half percent. Um, look, maybe as, as, as Churchill said, this is the uh, end of the beginning. And by that, I mean, several months from now, we may decide that this was the month that the Fed was able to start counting and saying it had several months of evidence that inflation was coming down. But that's a risk, and that's not exactly what Fed officials are saying right now. There's a lot of push-me-pull you. If you look at the, um, uh, the list of stuff that went up, food's still up by 1%. We still have strong uh, uh, gains in the housing market that may take some time to come down, and that's a third of the index. Meanwhile, you did have airfares come down. You did have uh, autos come down. That, that, those are the things that, you don't know, maybe that sticker shock that's happening right now as a result of that, people balking. Um, I was fascinated to listen to your conversation, Melissa, and here's what I was thinking about it. You can take a bet here that the Fed is wrong, but the only question is, are you paid for taking that risk? And maybe with the market down as much, you you you, you can take a $5 bet here to see the other guy's cards. If you don't have to put the, you know, go all in with all your money here, you know, $5 down to see your cards, maybe that's okay. Maybe it's not that big a bet. But I hear Guy talking and other folks about, well, is the Fed going to be wrong here? If so, and it doesn't cost you very much, and you're paid for that risk, I suppose take it. The, the higher the markets go, though, Steve, that, that bet to take the other side that the Fed right. is wrong is an even exactly. better bet. And that's what we're seeing today. I mean, with every rally in the stock market that we see, it makes the Fed's job a little bit harder, right? I mean, is, I, I, you got to wonder if these Fed officials are trotted out. There's a big rally going on in asset prices. Go, go talk the markets a little bit, you know, some sense into them. You know, the, the Fed is like, uh, uh, what do they do when they're healing in a sailboat? They're leaning against the, the healing of the boat as much as they can. So, you know, uh, uh, you've had a parade of officials last week. I was very busy out there saying what the Fed was saying about the idea that there wasn't much of a pivot. They're still in the three and a quarter, three and a half percent range. And then uh, I hope you have that, that chart on the bar chart, guys, that, that shows the flip. It was 75 at 829 this morning uh, for September, and now it's 50 caution. There's a lot more uh, uh, data to come. You've got another inflation report. Another. Uh, uh, th there's the three, what is that, 360 uh, on the, uh, oh, it's hard for me to see anyway, but whatever it is, uh, it, it's in the 360 range, 350 range. Um, and, and that's where the market's betting right now. And it, it's more interesting what's happening with the 75% uh, percent chance, which is now down uh, to about 30% or so, or, or, or 40% compared to where it was a 65 or 70% chance yesterday. Guy, would you be on that other side of the trade, as Steve says? No, well, it's interesting. I don't think the Fed is wrong. I actually think that what they've been doing since November is exactly right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm lined up with them. And to your point about yeah. the market going higher makes their job more difficult, I would submit in some ways it makes it easier. I think, and again, I'm, I'm not suggesting the only thing they watch is the stock market, but the higher the market goes, I think the more flexibility they have, the more... Mm. Um, runway they have to be more hawkish, if that makes sense. Steve, any thoughts on that? Yeah, so that's sort of like an, an absolute and relative argument. The Fed absolutely wants financial conditions tightened. Um, <clears throat> I think it's probably hardened if you look at the two-year, which has been up pretty strongly. Um, it likes that, but, but really the sweet spot for affecting the economy, for affecting business is in that five- and seven-year range where a lot of business finance is done. And when that sort of gets flat or goes down, um, absolutely financial conditions are loosening, as well as when the market goes up. So on that basis, yeah, I mean, they can be as hawkish as they want when, when they're leaning against the market guy. But ultimately what they want is they want absolute rates to be higher here uh, in order to tighten financial conditions.
Do you have your, your guitar packed up, your gear packed up for Jackson Hole, Steve? Because that's around the corner, right? I mean, you're, you're getting ready for it. <clears throat> yeah. yeah um, it's odd you think the guitar comes out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I have a small travel guitar. But obviously going out and playing in Jackson Hole is not the principal p purpose of it. We, we go and um, uh, the main purpose is to, is to see if I can uh, uh, last longer than the European central bankers in terms of drinking <laughs> into midnight. That's the key um, so that I can get as much out of the European central bankers who I don't normally get to see as much as uh, the, 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 the Americans are, are in bed by like 9 o'clock as far as I can tell. It's the Europeans that are the most fun and I've had uh, uh, great relations with the Finnish guys are the best the best of all to find out what's going on in Europe and around the world. Uh, but yeah, you're, if you're asking me, am I pointing towards Jackson Hole as an important pivot point? Mm -hmm. I think we'll have a lot more there and understand a lot more about what's going on. And I think the questions that we have are, you know, how much, <clears throat> pardon me, deterioration in the economy do you need to see before you pivot? Um, and, and how much do you think you're going to have to do uh, for the rest of the year? I think the, I think the market's built in, like I said, uh, for the rest of this year, not much gap between the market and the Fed. It's next year where that gap is big. Right. And right now, if I'm not mistaken, the people around that table are starting to think about next year. Steve, thank you. Pleasure. Steve Leisman. All right, so how should we think about the markets going higher and what the Fed needs to do? The byproduct of what the Fed needs to do, theoretically, should be a decline in asset prices, Dan. Yeah. It should theoretically be higher unemployment, things like that. But with the higher the stock market goes, the more help corporations get. They get a little bit more buffer here. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think that we're starting to see housing roll over a little bit. Um, I, some of the stuff in the employment data under the hood doesn't seem particularly great. We're seeing because of all of those inflationary pressures that corporates are feeling, we do see uh, peak margin situations. So we're seeing job cuts, um, if you will. So listen, a, a higher stock market, I think, is good for everybody, but it doesn't do the thing that they wanted to do. They wanted to bring down asset prices, kind of like deflate some asset bubbles. I don't know if mortgage rates are going to budge a whole heck of a lot um, anytime soon. So again, you know, I, I think that August is a really tough month. We have that uh, August 25th, 27th Jackson Hole meeting. And I think that if they don't trot out a lot of these Fed governors and they aren't particularly hawkish, then the market is going to continue to float up. But again, I'm not chasing that sort of thing. There's going to be some really nice trading opportunities in some of these kind of growthier names because they are so beaten up. Actually, I think the housing is kind of an interesting story here because that's about a third of the CPI and that's not coming down. That did did increase maybe a little slower than it did last month. But I think that's something that the Fed is really going to try to target because that needs to come down for CPI to come down. And I think that's where, too, you're seeing home builders are actually doing really well here on the idea that maybe rates are going to come down or not be as high. Uh, but I think over the longer run, even if they do tamp down that inflation, they bring down housing. They're just kind of pushing this issue down the line because you have, what, over 7 million, 70 million millennials out there who are all in this stage where they're getting houses. And after the 0809 crisis, there wasn't enough building. And there's a shortage of like four to six million dollars, uh, four to six million units of housing. So I think that's going to be a thing where, yes, we might see that come down here in the near term. But as a longer term, I think that actually when you look at like your home builders, that could actually be an interesting opportunity here.